Park's Tao Hauteng MEC for Economic Development has outlined how the province is going to reignite its economy in terms of South Africa's economic reconstruction and recovery plan. Earlier this week, Hauteng Premier David Makura delivered the State of the Province Address, reflecting on the challenges presented by the COVID-19 pandemic and the interventions made and the lessons learned. Park Star himself joins us now to unpack the methods Hauteng officials will use to help the economy get back on its feet. MEC, a very good morning and thank you so much for speaking to us. I suppose the first question would be, what are some of the lessons learnt from the challenges faced over the last, uh, say, 11 months of this pandemic? Well, thank you very much, Yuko, and good morning. I think the critical lessons learned is the reality that during a pandemic, we should find ways in which we keep the economy going and, and ensure that we limit the impact on, on jobs, on enterprise development, and on small enterprises in particular. But I also think that we have to acknowledge the reality that our economy wasn't particularly performing well even prior to the pandemic. So it means that, in fact, we need to confront that reality and say, what are the things that have kept our economy lackluster, like so to say, and what do we need to do to reindustrialize South Africa and ensure greater economic growth, development, and job creation underpinned by principles of uh, fundamental social economic transformation? I know that one of the things that was mentioned by, by the Premier is buy local. Now, this is obviously one of the strategies that you will employ. Take us through how this will at work. Well, the first thing that we have identified is the need to have an, ex an import substitution program and an export promotion program. And that would be anchored around our special economic zones, but also working with industry to promote their participation in export um, opportunities and to industrialize and commercialize um, a local produce so that we are able to export into the market. We've identified um, our special economic zones as the platform from which that intervention will take place. And amongst others, we've looked at our tambo as a particularly important precinct because that gives us the opportunity to work within a logistics hub um, and an airport to ensure that we're able to promote industries that would be located there and link them directly to export opportunities. Now, obviously, when we talk about buying local, one of the challenges is the, is the imports that come into the country, and many are priced a lot cheaper than uh, local products. How do you foresee dealing with that challenge? Well, the first is that we need to ensure that our products become more competitive. And that's why government is focused on ensuring that we promote industry development programs, that we support um, research and innovation and ensure that we are able to facilitate access to market for our own products. Because the more competitive you are, the better you can price your products. So that's very important. The second, of course, is to promote local consumption of local produce and goods. Um, and the third, I think, is a, is a macroeconomic issue that has to do with uh, how government would deal with matters of taxation uh, and global negotiations around trade and investment. Well, let's talk about young people, something very close to the hearts of, of many people. Uh, a lot of young people unemployed amongst uh, incredibly high rates uh, on, the, on the continent. What is there? Is there a plan for young people? Our plans are underpinned by youth development, a particular focus on ensuring that we can support youth development. Um, Houten has identified and is implementing the CEPO 1 million program focused on young people, both in terms of enabling them to gain access to opportunity. And these opportunities would range from skills development to job opportunities to enterprise development opportunities and partnering with the private sector so that we can uh, leverage of the energy and capability of our young people as a province and direct them to where the opportunities are. At a second level, we need to enhance our programs with regards to uh, relationships with TVET colleges and universities and target particular programs of training uh, in terms of identified sectors and ensure that young people are able to gain access to those opportunities. Now, on many shows on 405 here on that newsroom, we've spoken to many young people, and one of their biggest complaints has been timelines, that government has many, many plans, but we don't see those plans coming to fruition. Do we have timelines for this, MEC? Well, I should say that some of the programs are already underway, so when we're talking about the TEPO 1 million program, 
it is already underway. It is being implemented when we're talking about the industrialization program and the implementation of our special economic zones. You would know that uh, the president uh, came and oversaw uh, and did a site visit on uh, the investment that Ford is making of $1 billion into the China Special Economic Zone. So those programs are already underway. We are also enhancing partnerships around financing um, enterprise development um, and anticipate that we should be able to unveil a program within the next two to three months, working together with the private sector to ensure that we jointly invest in uh, financing um, uh, small enterprises and ensuring access to market. But it's also about um, a partnership that's evolving with the National Department for Small Business Development around uh, programs of, um, of business support um, that we're able to provide. And the Houghton Enterprise Propeller is already providing those, but we seek to enhance that with the partnerships that we're entering into, both within the public sector and the private sector. Now, the township economy in many ways has been the cornerstone of much of uh, Houghton's economic survival, if you will. Um, what are the plans to, to bolster this side of the economy? Well, the first is that uh, we would be presenting to the provincial legislature the draft of the bill, uh, the township development bill, that is focused on creating a legislative framework that overcomes the historic problems that have inhibited investment and, devel and development, particularly of commercial and industrial activity in the township. So the legislation is one intervention. Supporting that legislation would be a set, a set of programs around, amongst others, uh, how we enhance the taxi industry and work with the taxi industry to ensure that we're able to identify value chain opportunities ranging from property to uh, vehicle um, uh, support programs to purchasing of vehicles to maintenance of vehicles that is an integral part of their own industry. But we're also looking at uh, the... Um, residential sector and saying, well, we see a great opportunity. We know that in the townships, many people have invested in their property so that they are able to participate in the real estate market, so to say. Whether it's through backyard shack rental or back, back, room, shack or back room rental, people are already active. And we're now looking at a fund that would support um, that development so that we see that there's an opportunity and people can leverage of their property. Uh, so that's looking at... Um, uh, the real estate market and creating opportunities around that. We're also looking at industrial programs within the townships and creating uh, value chain opportunities in relation to industry, commerce, wholesale, and a whole range of other opportunities that currently do not exist in the townships. A lot of the business that takes place in the township is primarily around um, retail, and we think we seek to enhance that and ensure that, that we're able to spatially transform historically black townships from being the dormitories that they historically have been into areas that are spatially integrated where you can gain access to um, commercial and industrial activity and also office spaces in the townships. And that's how um, we should be able to enhance uh, the township economies. Now, cannabis remains the top on the agenda for the Premier in his uh, State of the Province address. He talked about how it can be monetized, so to speak. Uh, take us through those processes and what the outline is to convert cannabis or certainly convert Gauteng into a cannabis uh, production center. We're looking at the cannabis in, as, as an industrial opportunity, particularly because as the Gauteng province, uh, agricultural opportunities are not that large, but we know that the concentration of industry in Gauteng enables us to, to, to leverage uh, the industrial activity that takes place in Gauteng. So we're looking at cannabis as a particular industry where there's new opportunities that are emerging. We are beginning to engage with potential participants in those industries. They've identified participating in the city being special economic zone that we're working on, uh, but also other zones that we're able to work on. And it's also about partnering with the private sector because Ultimately, they are the ones that are going to industrialize and commercialize these products uh, and ensuring that we're able to participate in the export market. So our approach is about the industrial component of what uh, the cannabis industry would be able to produce for us as a province. Now, outside of the youth, two other groups potentially that are marginalized in many ways 
are women and those people that are living with disability. Let me see, what is the plan for those specific groups? Well, firstly, we have ensured that uh, the provincial government adopts a set-aside program for opportunities for young people, for women and for people with disabilities. So that we're not only saying, let us support uh, enterprises and jobs for